Opposition leader Joseph Harmon said the crime figures released by the Ghana police force cannot be believed because of the reality on the ground. Harmon made the comments at a press conference earlier today. Before the police released its official crime stats, President Efan Ali, during an address to the nation, said that the crime rate was down by 19.4% nationally. Subsequently, Crime Chief Wendell Blanham, at a press conference, sought to confirm the President's report of crime being down. The crime chief said from January 1st to November 1st, 2021, 199 murders were recorded in comparison to 133 reported for the same period last year, which he said was a 10.5% decrease. He further stated that 335 gun-related robberies were reported for January to November this year, as against 447 for the same period last year. However, opposition leader Joseph Harmon is not buying the crime chief report. As he said, Guyana's crime rate globally raises serious questions of the crime stats when compared to what the police are reporting. Now, you'd want to know in which country these people who prepare the statistics live in. Because I don't believe the police really believe in that. I find this particularly galling, given that Ghana now ranks in the top 10 countries globally for crime. How can these two statistics reflect the same country? As international statistics, agencies have little reason to manipulate their figures. And so it raises a serious question about whether the current government statistics are to be taken seriously. I don't take it seriously because the reality on the ground is different. Armin also said that he's concerned that the crime figures may have been manipulated. I think what is happening is that crime is a, a serious indicator of social and moral decay in your country. It's a serious indicator of the investment climate in your country. And therefore, to the extent to which those figures can be suppressed, it creates a very false image that everything is fine in Guyana. He said under the coalition government, there was a more accurate picture of crime in the country. While we were in office, Regularly, we had crime statistics pulling out there. Sometimes I think people used to harass Kamrad Ramjitan because he's putting out, say, putting out too much. Why are you putting out all of this? But that was the nature of our transparency, that we allowed people to understand very correctly what the situation was. This administration, this regime, when they came into office, decided that, look, you can't put out these figures, making us look bad. Harmon said, in reality, the crime situation in Guyana is bad. How could you explain, under the bright lights, not far away from where the president lives, a man can be gone down, execution style, and up to now, you find the car burnt up somewhere, you can't get a single person before the court how could you explain only the other day a doctor brutalized in his office or home and you have all sorts of crazy statements being made by people how could you justify the henry brothers and harry singh and the nonsense that came out of that police investigation and charging somebody who doesn't understand what is going on, that he is it, he is that person. How could any Guyanese believe that, that serious crime is on the, on the going down? How could any Guyanese believe they live in a country where since the PVP came into office, 
You have two of the largest drug busts in the world. In Europe. One of the drug busts alone almost can take care of our entire budget for an entire year. And all you can hear about is what happened to the computer, what happened to the scanner. And the scanner wasn't working and this wasn't working. How could you really seriously believe these statistics? How could you believe when people are robbed in broad daylight by these motorbike gangs that are going around? And you have a city that's covered by the smart city program, cameras all over the place, and yet nobody is being charged. Guyana is ranked number seven out of 136 countries on the World Population Review crime rate by country for 2021. Top on the list is Venezuela with Jamaica at number 10. Planning an elegant or corporate event? Let the experts at Star Rentals equip you. Give your event that spectacular five-star experience it deserves with the options of transparent tents of various sizes, indoor and outdoor formal bars and cocktail tables with LED lights, stage, podium with lighting, portable AC units, generators, executive portable washrooms, outdoor light tower, and much more. Call today, 226-3020, online, www.starrentalsgy.com. Star Rentals, we got you covered. I hope you've been enjoying the music. Let's pause for a quick commercial break. It's bigger than ever. It's Comfort Sleep Massive Tent Sale. 27th of November. Oh gosh, look, I've been saving and waiting for this all this time. It's bigger than ever. It's Comfort Sleep Massive Tent Sale. 27th of November at Comfort Sleep Eccles Industrial Site, East Bank Demerara. 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Biggest bargains. Biggest deal. Wait, but I hope you got money to buy. Blessing Toys. Comfort Sleep Tent will be so affordable. Mm -hmm. I can get what I want with the money I get. All right? So let's don't waste no time. Let me go early to Comfort Sleep mm -hmm. before Miss Noreen buy the whole of Comfort Sleep. <laughs> All COVID-19 safety measures will be absorbed. Don't miss this opportunity. Comfort sleep. Sleep on. Dream on. Hey, looking for office furniture, stationery, electronics, janitorial supplies, or even dietary products? Okay, stop searching, because we at Imperial Trading have all that and more. Check us out at 73 Section 8 Urban Street, or give us a ring on 639-3785. And be sure to ask about our special discounts. Mm -hmm. Whatever you need, we got it. Because at Imperial Trading, we operate so you can operate. The Ghana police force on Monday destroyed $150 million worth of cannabis plants and dry cannabis at Fort Nassau in the Burbies River. The police in a statement said on Monday that 120 plants ranging from a foot to six feet in height were discovered along with a camp and drying area. Further, it was reported that in the drying area, ranks found 450 pounds of dried cannabis. The 120 plants represent the find of four farms. The dried cannabis along with the 120 plants were destroyed by fire according to the police. PNCR executive member Orby Norton is not in agreement with the government's proposal of the representation of the People's Act Amendment Bill which seeks to break up Region 4 into four sub-districts. Norton who was speaking with reporters at Congress Place Sophia said the people of Region 4 will have to fight it and we will not allow them to gerrymander the countries. The People's Progressive Party are skillful riggers. They rig, and then they blame other people for rigging. This is the preliminary basis for rigging the next election. 
and we have to fight it with all of our energy, all of our intellect. Anil Nandala clearly believes that the PPP should dominate Guyana and rather than making constitutional and electoral reforms that will help the society to move forward and to heal, they are bringing proposals that are very divisive, that are very destructive, and therefore we will confront it. According to Attorney General Anil Nandala, Region 4 will be kept as one district and simply subdivided. He noted that Region 4 remains with the same number of seats. However, Norton had a different opinion. You make it, if you make it into four different entities, right away it will become seats in Parliament. You agree? Because every, every region has to have a certain amount of seats representing the region. Okay? Now, if you got two seats in region, you, you, you win region as East Coast. You win East Bank. You win the north of Georgetown. Right away, you now have three more regions that they will win, and it will create a disparity. As it stands, it would have been one region they would have lost. Region 4 is the stronghold of the AP and UAFC, and Norton feels if counting is the problem, systems can be put in place. If that was the case, then they wouldn't talk about dividing Region 4. They would have said, we will decentralize some of the counting. Look, if counting is the problem and you want to deal with that, you could have, region, you could have East Coast count by itself, Georgetown count by itself, East Bank, and then you bring it together as Region 4. It, the, the argument that it is the size of the region and population is a facade to hide the real intention. The real intention is to create a mechanism for the PPP to win at the expense of the AP and UFC. That will not happen. And, and for those who say I'm radical, if something like this comes, then it is not something you could deal with by talking to any landlord. You have to mobilize the nation against it because it is wrong. For these and other stories, do visit us at our website at www.rdproductionsty.com.